Hello folks, welcome back. If you remember, a couple of months ago we installed the power banks and solar panel in an attempt to run off-grid on our trip to the Isle of Man for the TT. This video is the follow-up to that. If you missed the first one, I'll pop a link in the description and there'll be a card at the end. Meanwhile, here is the results of how we got on, what we used it for, and how it fared. Also, at the end, there's a bit of how we fitted the solar panels, as we've had a few questions about that. So, without further ado, here we go. Right folks, we've just got to Morag Park, so we've parked up and this is where it begins. So just to make it totally clear, we're treating it like we're on electric hookup, so not using them while they're moving along. Um, it's just when we get parked up and then down. Flip the switch and turn the power back on. You can see that. And then I see on. Us. Um, 240, but without hookup, purely on the eco flows and the solar. Here we go. So as you can see from these screenshots, we were getting plenty of solar and keeping the power banks topped up nice and easily. This however was due to the unusual fact that we had 25 days of straight sunshine on the Isle of Man, which was quite unusual. However, we did get to test everything. We were running the battery charger, the fridge, the air fryer, Bev's hair straighteners, um, she forgot her hair dryer, but it would have ran that as well. And in the end, we sort of resigned ourselves to the fact that we weren't going to get a proper test with the sunshine we were getting. It was just too much all the time. So we carried on, but we decided we're going to stretch the test out a bit longer and probably upgrade a little bit more. It's not that we weren't getting enough power. It's more in the mornings it had run down overnight and obviously took longer to charge back up. Step one, get yourself some tile spacers, chop them up, and then just super glue them onto your brackets on the side, just so it leaves the right amount of gap, about one and a half, two mil of Sikaflex, rather than squeezing it all out from. Biggest bug there with these brackets is they don't come through good. Oop. Two 
didn't tell that. So I've just added the extension cables and then put the packaging back over with a few bits of cell tape. for the own installation. All right, sorry I didn't film the actual sticking it on, but it's pretty simple. Tape, put the plan on, tape around where you want it to be, then bang the sticker flips, plenty of it, either on the bracket or on this thing, stick it down in place, remove the tape, smooth around the edges, and weight it down and then just wait for it to set which this is now done so I'll get the weights off and start wiring it in so currently we're getting about 130 watts from the first panel so Let's cover that up and then hook the next one up and see what we're getting from that. So we're just the new second panel connected up now. We're getting about 120 watts from that one. And I read the first one wrong. It was about 111 watts. I was reading the output, not the solar. Duh. But anyway, so that was 111 from that one roughly, 120 from that one roughly individually. So now we'll connect them up in series and see what we get from that. So that's it. We're all wired up in series. So now we'll see what we get. So uncover the original one, the first what, 251 we fitted, and now that's just typical, clouds turned up. So now let's uncover the extra 251 so that will now be a potential of 500 watts never get 500 watts but potentially it's there so let's see what we're getting so as you can see we've doubled our input and hopefully improved our off-grid capability with posh cats rally coming up and four days at the rally field we'll find out soon enough any questions pop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them thanks very much for watching stay safe and we'll see you soon take care bye